July 29th marked the day when eight peaceful protesters merely holding up signs managed to send shockwaves throughout Malaysia, causing a nationwide stir in an incident that went viral locally and internationally. Polis menahan lapan individu menyertai perhimpunan berkaitan hak LGBTQ. Lapan lelaki yang berhimpun di hadapan pusat beli belah Sogo. Lapan individu dicukup pihak berkuasa selepas disyaki terlibat dengan ajaran Ahmadi religion. Malaysian authorities had cracked down on the first LGBT plus solidarity protest in Malaysia in years, apprehending and mass arresting eight protesters in front of a cheering crowd. The protesters are members of a persecuted religious minority, the Ahmadi religion of peace and light, who were expressing solidarity with the LGBT plus community and condemning forms of persecution against them. They were holding up placards that read, gay people are not criminals, being gay is not a crime, and people should not be persecuted because of their sexual orientation. And they were chanting, down, down Sharia court, only God can judge a slogan that became iconic of their brave humanitarian stance. They were detained for a total of 48 hours, intensively questioned about their religious beliefs and charged with serious civil and religious offenses, which can see them jailed for many years. The incident, caught on live footage, was covered by Malaysia's prime TV stations and went viral on social media and local media outlets, prompting the Kuala Lumpur police chief to come out with a press statement. Um, tahun yang telah menyertai perhimpunan yang menyok mengatakan bahawa di Malaysia ini hak-hak uh, LGBT uh, disekat ya yeah? following this major international news agencies like the independent bnn pink news and others have reported on the incident the story then escalated on a major level with the Prime Minister's Office of Religious Affairs publicly condemning the protest and cautioning the Malaysian people against imitating the protesters amid public condemnation by the Sharia court. As a result, the protesters are currently being slandered and declared apostates by religious scholars publicly and by society on social media, giving sanctions for them to be murdered and putting them in serious danger of vigilante attacks. Iconic human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, who is known for his lifelong service to human rights campaigns globally and in Malaysia for many decades, was deeply disturbed by this and adopted the case. Peter is the director of the Peter Tatchell Foundation and was featured recently in the Hating Peter Tatchell Netflix documentary in which Ian McKellen, Stephen Fry, and Elton John described him as very necessary, incredibly brave, doing good work in a world where most people are too timid. He released a statement applauding the protesters and expressing concern over their safety. This is a laudable, brave example of one persecuted minority supporting another. Ahmadis are an oppressed religious minority in Malaysia. Unlike mainstream Muslims, the Ahmadi religion of peace and light accepts LGBT plus people and supports their human rights. What they did was very courageous. I fear they will pay a heavy price under Malaysia's draconian anti-protest and sectarian religious laws. In this exclusive interview with Hadil El Kuli, Human Rights Outreach Coordinator at the Ahmadi Religion of Peace and Light, Peter gives his take on the protests and the stance the Ahmadi Religion of Peace and Light protesters have made. Thank you so much for joining us today, first off. Well, it's my great honor to join you and to express my heartfelt support for those very brave eight Ahmadi religion of peace and light protesters who stood up for the human rights of LGBT plus people. It's a classic example, an inspirational example of one oppressed minority supporting another. You know, what they did was help shine a light on the persecution of LGBT plus people in Malaysia. And they, of course, are paying a price themselves. So, uh, 
their action is, is wholly commendable. Thank you so much, Peter. And maybe just from, from the last thing you said, obviously uh, you have been supporting human rights campaigns in Malaysia and in the Muslim world in general. And we just wanted to understand a little bit from you more. Um, what do LGBTQ minorities in Malaysia and in general in the Muslim world face? Well, in Malaysia, the maximum penalty for same-sex relations is 20 years imprisonment plus caning or flogging. Uh, that is under a colonial era law that was imposed by Britain in the 19th century in 1871 and has never since been repealed. So what Malaysia is actually doing is enforcing an imperialist law on its own people. A law that is clearly in contravention of Malaysia's own constitution. Article 10.1 of the Malaysian constitution guarantees freedom of speech, assembly and association. That is what those eight protesters did. They exercised their constitutional right. Moreover, Article 3.1 and 11.1 of the Malaysian constitution guarantee freedom of religion. So as Ahmadi Muslims of religion of peace and light, they were exercising their religious freedom. You have obviously, like we were saying, you've supported a lot of activism on, on human rights and specifically on LGBTQ rights. And um, you've been one of the allies who've been monitoring this case from the beginning and you, you showed your support for this case. What was it about this protest specifically that made you want to adopt this case and support it in this way that you did? Well, this protest on the 29th of July was, as far as we can recall, one of the first LGBT plus protests in Malaysia for many, many years, perhaps even decades. So it was groundbreaking, historic, and incredibly brave, given Malaysia's very repressive anti-protest laws. Um, what those eight protesters did, aged 18 to 56, I think, um, they were taking a stand for human rights. Uh, not only in accordance with Malaysia's own constitution, but in accordance with the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Commonwealth Charter, which Malaysia, as a member of the Commonwealth, has signed and pledged to uphold. So there is no legal basis for their arrest, let alone their prosecution or conviction. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you've seen right on the same day of the protest, actually, you had the chief of police who came and he had like a press conference. A couple of days later from the prime minister's office, there was the, um, the minister of religious affairs who issued his statement. So there was obviously a very fast, a very public um, condemnation of the group in such a very uh, harsh way. So what do you think the consequences would be for these eight after such publicly uh, harsh uh, statements against them? It's quite clear that the Malaysian authorities want to make an example of them. It's quite clear that they intend to throw the book at them and the possible sentences uh, could be very severe, could result in many years imprisonment. So that is why it's so important that we make this case known around the world, that we increase pressure on the Malaysian government, uh, exposing what they're doing in order that this might deter them from a harsh sentence. Yeah. But it all depends on the judge sitting on the case. Um, there are some independent judges left in Malaysia, but many are under huge pressure to conform to what the government and police dictate. So there is no guarantee of a fair trial in this case. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, we've seen next to the very uh, harsh official stance, there was also like a wave of uh, comments on social media that were very violent, very um, homophobic in nature. Um, like we said, calling even for the, for the people, for the aid to be uh, publicly caned and even to be murdered. Do you, do you see that there is any way for them to resume their lives normally in, in, in Malaysia? How do you think they would be able to even continue in, in such a very socially very hostile environment against them? So long as their identities are known, they will forever be at risk of violent attack and perhaps even murder. Uh, Malaysia is no longer safe for them. And it really is 
an indictment of the authorities that their names have been publicized because the authorities knew that by so doing, it would put them under risk of uh, violent assault and even worse. And of course, these statements by some religious scholars suggest that it would be right to have them killed. Um, they have given a green light, theologically, to the murder of these eight protesters um, under Sharia edicts. Absolutely. And actually not just their names, but their pictures were also now um, went viral everywhere. And we had reports of some of them to go out, they have to wear face masks, so they are extremely um, in danger. And actually speaking of which, um, obviously here you have a group of a, of a, a religious minority that is supporting another uh, oppressed minority. So we wanted to understand from you, what's your perspective on religious intolerance towards LGBTQ minorities in general? Well, of course, most of the main religions have a history of extreme homophobia. They were complicit in the persecution of LGBT plus people uh, down the centuries and millennia. Um, but of course, there are people in all faiths who stand with us for human rights. Uh, what is particularly brave and quite exceptional is the way in which the Ahmadi religion of peace and light has taken a stand very explicitly, not only welcoming LGBT plus people as members of the faith, but also publicly, in this case, defending their human rights. I cannot think of any other Muslim-based religion that has done that. Um, there are, of course, individual Muslims uh, and some, even some individual Muslim clerics who have spoken out for LGBT plus rights, but not as a religion as a whole. Yeah. And uh, we've been following your activism as well, and you have been uh, recently protesting in Qatar, and you've experienced being arrested firsthand. And it resonated a lot with um, our persecuted members who are at the moment being arrested and persecuted in many Muslim countries. So, um, what is your opinion on the persecution of members of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light, specifically for being inclusive of LGBTQ members? Well, of course, even if the Ahmadi religion of peace and light did not embrace LGBT plus members, they would be persecuted because they don't fit the mainstream Muslim narrative or the mainstream uh, sect or uh, view of Islam. Um, so they've taken a stance, a very brave, commendable stance, um, and we need to stand in support of their rights, the rights of the Abahani religion of peace and light, to practice their faith as they wish, which is a fundamental human right recognized in all international human rights law. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Peter. And actually, even just on that, obviously speaking of religious communities, um, the, the stance of the eight were to show solidarity with uh, the LGBTQ people and with minorities in general. Um, as we've seen, this is a, a, a fundamental human right, not just for members of the faith, but for everybody. And I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, what can religious communities do more of to show solidarity with the LGBTQ community? It's very important that we have voices within all religious communities to defend the rights of LGBT plus people and women, um, to say that these are human rights, they are consistent with the faith and belief of a loving, kind, compassionate religion, and that those who preach hate, discrimination and even violence against women and LGBTs, they are not true to the fundamental ethos of their religion. And you've mentioned that one of the things that really stood out for you in this protest is that you've seen um, one oppressed minority supporting the other. Um, why do you think it's so important that different oppressed minorities um, help one another and what other ways can minorities show solidarity to each other? When you're a minority, you are beleaguered on the margins, on the fringes of society. So if you can get the support of other oppressed minorities, that gives you strength and solace, it gives you hope, and through your collective efforts, you can help and support each other. You know, together we are stronger. 
it's always best if we find allies and build coalitions. And in this particular case, it is so important and valued that an oppressed religious minority, like the Kipanis, have the support of the LGBT plus community in reciprocation for their support for us. You know, together we are stronger. And so far as I'm aware, this is the first time a Muslim-based religious group has stood in direct solidarity with the LGBT plus community. There have been individual Muslims, but not the faith, a particular faith as such. So this is a first, and it's a shining light and beacon for Muslims around the world to know that there are, is a, a branch of Islam, a, a Muslim faith, the Maliki religion, peace and light, that does not stand on the side of oppression and discrimination. That's really important for Muslims all across the world to know that being Muslim does not necessarily require you, or should not require you, uh, to be homophobic, biphobic, or transphobic. Absolutely, and our activism continues. We have um, other members of our faith, the LGBTQ members, who are, as we speak, uh, detained and arrested in um, other countries around the world. Uh, we have uh, over 101 members detained in Turkey at the moment for over 90 days. Uh, one of them is an LGBTQ member in Algeria who's stuck. She can't go back to Algeria. She can't stay in Turkey. We have LGBTQ members in Iran, so um, we are very, very thankful for your support and for your voice um, to support them and, and any minority who have to fight for such a basic right of human rights and dignity and freedom of belief. So I thank you so much again for your time and for meeting us here today and for your support of the eight. And we hope that uh, your voice in this interview would be a deterrent and a protection for them um, as we await for the court trial um, very soon. Thank you so much, Peter. Whatever happens, these eight protesters will go down in history. Heroes of human rights, valued allies and supporters of the LGBT plus community. I thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. It was really amazing to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.